closed. All right, this is the 100% information base. We want you guys to participate in this. Okay. We want to give you as many different topics on player development as possible. Player development really isn't, in my opinion, about drills and what kind of tricky drills you can do with guys. You know, it's, it's, it's more than that. It's about making sure that our assets, all right, from when we draft them to when they sign their first con their next contract, we either want to sign them long term, all right, or we want to trade them for something that's valuable to us. And in that process, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Guys can go to the left, guys can go to the right. It could be talent-based, it could be attitude-based, it could be injury. There's a lot of things, you know, that could happen in this whole process. So for me, you know, everybody does this a little bit different, all right? And if anybody in this room, including me, thinks our way is the only way, then we're kidding ourselves. <coughs> there's a million ways to get this thing done. The people that will be speaking tonight are very knowledgeable and see player development differently. We don't want nine people that see it the same to talk to you guys. We want fresh ideas. We want ideas that will sort of help you bring back one, two, three, five different things to your teams. You know, and that's what we want. But at the end of the day, it's about developing our assets, either through the draft, free agents that lost their way, all right, players that we pick up, undrafted guys. We, at the end of the day, want to see value for that. The more draft picks that you hit, the front office can, can only do so much for us. All right? The front office can only do so much. They evaluate all year. They give us assets to develop. And we have to find a way to see value at the end of the day for those assets. At the end of the day, we can complain, this guy, that guy. At the end of the day, we can complain about, you know, all the time about coaches and you know, there's a lot of negativity sometimes that happens, especially with young players. Right? But it's our job on player development to figure it out. Right? Because at the end of the day, if we don't see value for it, it's our fault. Thank you. It's not anybody else's fault but us. For the Dallas Mavericks, we see player development this way. All right? The first thing first, besides the basketball part, is making sure we develop them as far as habit-wise to be successful going forward. So uh, right off the bat, before we even get on the court, myself, Don Coxney, who's in the back, you'll hear from Don later. Uh, he's the director of sports psychology for the Mavs. What we do is we meet, and we make sure that they know a few different things. All right? Before they even get on the court, we have a 90-60-30 rule. All right? They're 90 minutes early for every practice they get on. Okay. They're 60 minutes early for every, every meeting that they have on the road or with any coach. And in any bus that we have during the year, during the season on the road, they're 30 minutes early. And if they're one second late, it's a $2,500 fine. We don't care if it's our best guy, we don't care if it's our worst guy. On the top, habit is the most important thing for us. Okay, and, and obviously the young guys are gonna struggle with that a little bit. But it, we always tell guys, look, we're developing you for us or we're developing you for somebody else. At the end of the day, we want you to have great habits that are going to make you successful. The basketball part, we'll figure out if you're good enough or not. But we have to have those habits that we instill in those, on our guys to make sure that we're 100% communicating with them about what we expect. The next level of our development, make sure they know everybody's name. It's a little thing, but for us it's huge. Know your coach's name, know your support staff name, know your trainer's name, strength coaches, equipment people, all right, and you treat everybody with respect. In player development, you know, we're putting out fires left and right. It's our job to get them better on the court, that's great, but it's also, we got to do some things to hold them in line and hold them accountable to what we're doing. All right, we, we take a lot of pride with that now. We want to make sure they're professional, they get held accountable, and they communicate. Right? Big, you know, some of the biggest challenges we have is you know, everybody that's usually drafted is the LeBron James of their college team. Right, we were a pretty successful organization for a long time. Mostly the guys that we draft, not in the last couple of years because they're higher picks, but most of the guys we bring in are going to be fourth or fifth option. So understanding some of the things that our, our organization and our coaching staff wants out of them, we need to communicate with them. 
I feel as though it's my job and our job in player development to carry the message from the head coach down to the player. Because a lot of times with our young guys, our head coach doesn't really have the time for that, you know, to deal with our young guys every day. So it's our job to carry the water from the coach to our player and really communicate what they really need to do, what they need to get better at, what they're not doing. The thing that I, I, I like the least is in coaching meetings when coaches complain about players and they don't bring it to the player. All right? We've had things in meetings where, you know, over the years, Dallas and other places, well, this guy's not rolling hard enough. My first question <coughs> for you is, did you tell him? And 99% of the time is, why the fuck should I tell him? Well, that's our job. It's our job to bring that message. Look, there's a million things, you know, said in coaches' meetings we can't bring to the play. Obviously, that's sacred with the coaching staff. And there's going to be some things with that. But our biggest thing is, if it's basketball related, we bring it to them. And it's our job to be as honest as possible with our players, to tell them the God honest truth, day in and day out, if they like it or not. And if you're not having hard conversations with your players, I don't think you're doing this thing right. All right? Playing time, coach is always screwing me, I need more touches, all those things we see. We gotta understand that, look, you have to develop habits and trust in our head coach that know what they're gonna bring to the table every day that they're gonna rely on, especially a veteran coach. We have a veteran coach that won a championship that's been doing this a long time, all right? So he's set in his ways as far as, I need this guy to do this or he's not gonna play. All right, so this guy can fight me all, all fight us all we want, but if we're not honest and say, look, if you're not gonna do this, you're not gonna play. And if you're going to bring this attitude every day, you're probably going to get traded or cut. We've had those meetings with players. We say, look, bud, you're going to probably be gone in a year. I'll be 100% honest. On a couple of players, it happens. You've got to be honest. Because at the end of the day, you've got to warn them. But we've got to steer them out of harm through with that coach. All right? If our coach wants something done, you know, one way, that's the one way they need to do it. And if they develop that skill that they get into an NBA game, and develop value for themselves and trust in our head coach, we did our job. And then they can add things to the game, all right? We see so much in player development. Trainers, other guys, you know, that want to develop every player, the Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, let's be honest, you know, that doesn't happen. Let's start with one skill to get them in the game, all right? That one-legged finger from 22 feet contestant isn't a great shot to take. You see that all the time on the internet, and that's not what we do. Our job is to steer them out of harm's way, make sure they're going to develop at least one skill to get into an NBA game, and develop trust with our coaches. And if you're not ready to do that, if we're in a seven-game losing streak, and everybody's bullshitting everybody, and if you're at your computer watching clips from the night before, instead of talking to your players when things are going sideways, you're not doing your job. Our job is to put fires out, Communicate and tell our guys the truth. All right. Then the basketball stuff takes care of itself. Whatever drill you want, you know this ain't about that. We're not. Our guys that are going to speak to you tonight aren't giving you drills. They're giving you concepts and what they see out of player development. And understand that the best player development guys, in my opinion, in the league, are the guys that can talk and communicate and have those tough conversations. And again, that's how I value player development. Again, my way. There might be a, there's a million other ways. My way, my way, that's not right for everyone. It's right for me, and it works for us in the way we do things. I think trust, honesty, and just being 100% honest with our guys, because you can have that tough conversation. And it's about spending that time with the player. It's about getting to know them. It's not about just working them out and saying, I'll see you tomorrow. All right? It's taking them out to eat. It's texting. It's how you doing. Visiting them in the off season. Making sure everything's all right. Because they know when they got a tough conversation, they're going to have that. I've seen coaches that do just a nine to five thing. And then they try to get with a player when things are going tough, and they got no shit. They got no shit. Because then when they're trying to talk to the player, the player's looking at them like they hit a snow cone to you guys. They don't want anything to do with it. All right? So you got to develop equity with your player. Spend the time with them. All right? Because then at the end, you can have those tough conversations. And I just believe that. I'm a big believer in habit, telling them the same thing day in and day out. You know, we tell our guys, it's like, you know, sometimes being in the NBA as a rookie, it's like, you know, having you know, a muffin and coffee every day for 30 years, doing the same thing every day. Getting better in this league sometimes is boring. 
right? It's boring. It's doing the same thing every day until that gets in their head of what they need to do. But I'm a huge believer in it. I love player development. This is the only job I ever want to have for the rest of my life. Because I feel as though connecting to the player at our level is probably the, the closest thing to just sort of helping people as you know in the NBA they can have. Because we're there with them every day. We're dealing with the struggles and we're dealing with the ups and downs. Everybody wants to be around when things are going good. Everybody. When shit gets going bad, forget about it. Ground zero. Nobody's there. Alright? We'll see more people, you know, doing water slides in Chernobyl than seeing things around NBA fights when things are going bad. I'm a, I'm a huge believer in that. I could have conversations from our 15th best player to our best player because it's the same. We hold everybody accountable, we care about them, but we gotta tell them the truth. I think you guys are gonna enjoy tonight. These guys are close personal friends of mine. All right, they do a great job and they see things a little different. The first speaker I wanna announce before he comes up is Dave Severance from the Los Angeles Clip. I've known Dave for about 20 years. All right, Dave's been in every level of basketball that you know in a man. In my opinion, he's the best player development guy in the NBA. All right? The reason why I think he's the best is because he doesn't care who he's working with. Yeah, Dave, I'm talking about you. All right? He doesn't care who he's working with. I've seen him work with you know, D-League guys, guys that have no chance, to the best guy. Remember, you know, this league's all about taking credit sometimes. <coughs> you see some guys around the league that just want to work out the best play and take credit for like, you know, an MVP quality player playing well. But they only want to work out the best guy. I feel as though player development is mostly about those other guys. In my opinion, it's about 99 guys that really matter in this league. All right, after that, it's like rearranging the deck shift of the Titanic. All right, we could, we could rearrange our roster any way we want, but it's really about making those guys that are at the Mendoza line and below just a little bit better. If we can make the 14th best guy our 11th best guy, that's player development. That's having balls. All right, it's having balls working out pregame undrafted guys at 4 o'clock and not being, you know, not waiting until the media comes and sprint over to the media so we can get on Twitter. Bullshit. All right? It's about working with the guys that almost have no chance. All right? And you're going to talk to one of those guys tonight. Kyle Collinsworth from the Dallas Mavericks will be here speaking probably about the second and last or last. And he's a guy with what player development is all about. It's about developing those guys that need it the most, not the guys that already have it, and not the guys that already have a max contract. All right? Dave, again, has worked in the NBA a long time, worked with me with Tim Grover in Chicago, worked for the uh, Chicago Bulls and the Clippers. Again, he's been everywhere. And I, I love him because he just tells it straight. Doesn't bullshit, doesn't BS, just, you know, I really respect him. He's one of my best friends. And let's give Dave, Dave Severin a hand. Uh, you know, Mike contacted me about doing this. I, I, I really didn't have a topic. Like last year, he gave me kind of a specific thing, uh, which was, you know, the transition from player development to what I do now was a scout. And so this year, I just kind of put together a hodgepodge, a smorgasbord and stuff. So. Hopefully you don't mind. There's real no real roadmap today. It's just kind of all over the place. But that's all right. And hopefully we have time for a lot of questions. Uh, DA, you okay? Hey, I'm good. All right. Um, hey, you want one of our guys to operate that for you? Sure. Uh, Con, you gonna give him overtime? Yeah, eleven bucks an hour instead of ten. No matter what we do as coaches, we're in position. I think, and, and, and by the way, don't worry about writing notes. I'll send this to you if you want. Uh, the, the PowerPoint. So just, just email me. Uh, December.com. I, I, I think we all understand, but, but have to be reinforced with the thinking that they, they're the center of the whole universe. They're the, really the only thing that matters uh, in this game. No matter what level you're at. It's all about them. It's not about us, it's all about them. And a lot of times we get so consumed with you know, the outside, our staff, our families, uh, think, things, you know, if you're a high school coach, parents, if you're a pro coach, agents, and all that stuff 
takes up so much of our energy and our time that sometimes we do forget that those guys are the player, they're the center of our basketball universe. I mean, they're the most important thing. Um, so from time to time, we get kind of sideways and we forget that. All right, what's important? And like most of this is just kind of me and what I feel really strongly about. You can disagree or agree, whatever. But to me, here's what's important. It's really 90% development. And what I mean by that, I see the one on the, on the top left. I learned this from DK, who you're going to hear later. DK, you get a little credit right here. Uh, he, he talked about one time when I was listening to him, chips. Uh, you start with the small chips. The $1 chips and a conversation with the player. You meet him for the first time. It's a $1 chip. Where are you from? Where'd you play? Next time it's a $5 chip. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your upbringing. And then you move on. You know, you got the $10 chips and you're going, you know, to the you know, $100 chips until you really got a relationship with that guy. That's that's really important. And I never really thought of that, DK, until you started talking about that one time, about three years ago. Nate Tibbetts talks about we can't poison the water. All right? What do I mean by that? We got to be on the exact same page as the head coach. And you can't poison the water from his message at all. Uh, that's really important. You can't get sideways and, and not be on the same page as your head coach. Agree or disagree with what the water is, you can't poison it. Learn from this guy the importance of routine. We had a guy on our team three years ago, Brian knows this. He has 93 things that he does the exact same every game day. JJ. I mean, he, he, he listed it one time. The exact same routine. Shots, food, sleep, nap, this time, nap time. It's ridiculous. And it's like it ended up being 93 things that he does the exact same on game day. And that's a little why? You know, that's a little crazy. That's a little too much. But I think we have to have routines. And it's really important that as soon as we get a player, especially a young player, because a lot of times they've had no routine and structure. You've got to get to, into a routine as quickly as you can. One of my guys, Tate's Lock. Sound bites. It's really important, I think, when you're working with players that you talk in sound bites. They don't want to hear you talk. Uh, you you got to do it quick, and you got to learn to teach in sound bites so you're not just overwhelming them with stuff. And then really, that's, that, that's to me, stuff like this isn't all, but stuff like this is 90% of what we do. Really, it's 10% of the skills. <coughs> you guys can all teach skills. All right. I'm pretty sure. What's next? All right, well, what's development? In NBA speak, it's like world peace. There's universal support for the concept of great divergence on how it should be achieved. Um, and you can talk to everybody in here, and they have a different idea of what player development is. Uh, so there's a lot of different ideas and thoughts about it. Okay, next. On average to below average team, which is at least half the league, you guys can agree with that. You got to make the young guys better. Because then they become an asset for a trade, uh, or they can get in the game and increase their value. But most of the teams are, are average teams or below average teams, and your your responsibility is to make those young guys better. All right. Give my boy Lance Bass a little, a little shout out there. Now we got the little uh, connected, what they what do they call it, Darcy, the Venn diagram. Huh? So we got these three things that are connected. These guys are the ones that touch the players the most. And they gotta be in sync. Assistant coaches, strength conditioning, specialists. We got a lot of specialists now, don't we? Shit. Ball handling specialists. We got the shooting coach. We got the load coach. Uh, what else we got? We got, we got a lot. We, uh, there's a lot of different specialists out there now. Body massage, deep tissue. I'm, the list goes on and on. But 
These are the people that really touch the players the most. And those three groups of people have to be in sync. Um, and we, as we all know, that it's very critical that, uh, that the summers be a huge part of that. <coughs> all right. The other day I was reading an article, and, and there's a lot of teams that are in a rebuild. The head coach recently said, most important element of player development, even with the rebuild, is sending a message to young players that there are consequences for mistakes. A lot, a lot of times people think, and coaches will look at it like, well, shoot, we're rebuilding, so all that stuff's slack. You know, we got to play those young guys no matter what, because we're in a rebuild. And sometimes we do those guys a disservice by not holding them accountable. And by not understanding that, hey man, there are consequences if you fuck up in a game and keep making the same mistake over and over. I, I think we do guys that, and our team a disservice by not, regardless of where to rebuild or not, you still gotta hold those guys accountable. All right. Any questions? You all right? Hey Nick. Yeah. Less is more. And you said it earlier, Sweets, I think I heard you say. When you get a guy young, early, I think it's really important that you maximize what they can do well first. You can't complete the whole puzzle in a day. You, gotta, you can't give them 10 things in a summer, in a day, in a year, really. I think summers are two to three different areas. I, and I got her up there for a reason. She's a really good player, by the way, if you've never seen her play. She's tough. But, I, I, uh, she works out in a place that I go to in LA probably for the last two months before their season started. Go back, man. Sweet Chuck. Cheap waiver, man. Okay. God. Uh, um, so she was working out, and I think the guy's name was Noah, Mike? The Roach. Noah, Roach. Yeah, Noah. Okay, the guy. Um, and she was with him for two straight months, and I see her in there two or three times a day. And they were working on the exact two to three things, simple things that if I told you, you'd be amazed for like two straight months. Uh, and, and she's probably the best, one of the best women players in history. And they were keeping it really simple, and it was the same two or three drills and same two or three concepts for two straight months. All right, what do we got next? I hear a lot of the young coaches say, once they get to the gym, they'll work for them. Okay. Yeah. That's not a problem. But I get tired of begging them to get there. You ever had that guy? I talk to coaches all the time. Oh, yeah, man, he's great. But shit, I have a hard time getting him. Let's be honest. Their faith is determined. <coughs> Big picture. So if you're freaking out and worrying about, God, I get this guy to the gym. I got to figure out a way to motivate him. I got to figure out, nah. And it's not college anymore. College, what do you do? Probably just get rid of him. That guy, his fate's been determined. He's probably going to cut himself or get traded or something. I don't know why I put that in there because I, I was asked that question about four times this week before I put that in there. All right. Um, I'm always on the lookout for these crazy light bulb moments. Um, who, who, who read the sleep article that came out about two or three days ago? It was really good. If you get a chance, to read it. It's on one of those. There's so many of those blogs, and Nick's got one. I read. I mean, there's all these websites, but you know, we we're fortunate because somebody out of the nine million people that work for us, right, Brian? Somebody puts all that together and sends it to us in the morning. All the articles that were written the day before on basketball. So we're lucky. But there's all kinds of resources. But I but I found this one the other day. ESPN study. 80% of the game is played laterally and backwards. Yet most of our conditioning training is done forward. I saw that, you know, light goes on. I said, yeah, we need to do more lateral stuff. I don't know, defense, offense, backwards. Think about how many times a guy runs backwards in a game on get back on defense. But we never train that. Or laterally driving the ball, or, or obviously defensively. So I, I think you got to be on the lookout for those light bulb moments, man. You never thought of that, like the sleep thing, Chewy. Right? That's a great article on sleep. I don't know that much about sleep. It's really important. Very important. All right. 
Foi uma boa dia. <laughs> Would you guys agree with this? At least 50 to 60% of our work is done on shooting. I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe more. I mean, when I watch guys, because I go all the time to watch guys train and work out in LA and on the road, and that's basically all I do. And 50 to 60% of the time, they're working on shooting, some kind of shooting. Uh, I got to ask David, what's up with the shorts? I, I don't get that. So we, are we going back up now? Kelly you bring it back. Okay. By the way, Kelly was working out the other day with a beanie on. Yeah. And, and we were in LA. <laughs> Damnest thing I ever seen. <laughs> working out though. Here, here's, here's what I think about shooting. I'm fascinated with shooting. 35 years ago, I wrote my master's thesis on shooting. And I still love to study it. And talk to guys about it, and, and read articles on shooting. And just I, it, to me, it's really interesting. But I'm constantly doing that to te to constantly test my theory of of shooting. I, I think you got to ask yourself if we can agree that at least fifty to sixty percent of the time we spend is on shooting. What is it you truly believe in? If I ask. Somebody, right? If I ask David, Dave, what do you really believe in about shooting? This, this, and this. What do you believe about making changes? What if you go to a guy, I went to Joe Kim the first, I said, Joe, can we, no, coach, don't, don't even try. You sure? Yeah, don't even try, because I'm not going to change. Um, so, what do you believe about making changes? Do you, do you feel like, I, I'm headstrong, I'm going to make that guy change? Or you just feel, oh well, then maybe with a million reps it'll get better. I don't know. But I think you know, need to know what you believe in. What are the three to four parts of the shot that you believe 100% to be true? It's like, yes, I believe that totally. This, this is something I'm so strong like. I know what Mike, because we talk about it all the time. I know what he really, he's really a firm believer on weekend development, weekend uh, Finishes around the basket. He's really strong on elbow has to be above the eye bar. Because we talk about it all the time. What do you believe? What 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 is it? Is it feet? Is, I don't know. I can't answer that for you, but you damn sure better know. In your head, when you get a guy. Do you study the, you know, what we call the shooting coaches and their methods? How do they compare to yours? You know, most teams have a guy now, right? Like maybe half the teams. You ever talk to that guy? What's his feeling? I, me and Nick talked to the gym one day, 30 minutes, 40 minutes on shooting. What do you believe? What do I believe? There's no right or wrong, but I think you have to have an idea in your head so you can constantly test your theory. All right, what we got here? All right, you, you guys have all heard this. This is not new. What's coming next, you guys have all and you know it's true, and so this is kind of just a repeat for you. All right, number one. It's self-explanatory. Right? You guys, you, you guys, I don't know, you're probably too young to remember the Care Bears. <laughs> yeah? Who are the other guys? The Ninja Turtles. You're probably too young to that. But that's, that basically says it all in a nutshell. All right, number two. Knowledge. They got to know that you know your stuff. And, and I'm not saying anybody in here is not competent because you're all at a high level and I'm sure you are. I'm sure everybody here is very competent. But we can always improve. Study films, clinics, talks to each other. There's no secrets. The, the last new thing in basketball, in my opinion, was the jump shot by Hank Lucetti in the 1940s and 50s. Coach, you remember that? I, that's probably to me the last really new thing besides the three-point line and the shot clock, the way guys play. So there's really not a whole lot of secrets, but you got to know your stuff because any edge you can give them to go from you know two million to five million, shit, that's big. That's really huge. All right, what's three? We all know this, and Mike talked about it. If you got a family, if you have a wife, if you have little kids, you got to figure that out. 
If you've got a wife that's going to bitch and moan because you have to go to the gym at midnight, either get a new job or a new wife. I don't know. <laughs> All right, because that's going to happen. Okay, I, and you're all sitting there going, oh yeah, yeah, oh, I'm available 24 seven. Yeah, shit, I'll go. Oh, and then she starts chirping at you a little bit. Or there's a, a, a t-ball game you got to go to. See, these things are going to happen to you if you have a family. It's going to happen. Um, so, you know, that's just a decision you got to make. And when you get to this level, I, that's, that's part of the price of admission. Right? you, you got to be able to do that. All right, what's next? What's four? Sweat equity. We all know that. Sweet Chuck, that, the Disneyland shirt's for you, by the way. I appreciate you, buddy. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so we all know that. You must be, at times, doesn't have to be all, but at times you have to be willing to do that. Sometimes sweat equity doesn't mean physical sweat. It you know, means film, talking, all that stuff. And don't neglect the correcting and teaching part of your relationship. So I, I'm a big believer in that if something has to be corrected, you've got to do it now. I mean, you've got to do it right away. You can't let something that needs to be corrected linger. Okay, and the last one, we all need to know that those five things, or those four things, lead to the most important thing that you have to have, and everybody knows that is trust. All right, and it must be developed both ways. It's just not a one-way street when it comes to trust. Easy to say, hard to do. And you guys know, as soon as, as, soon as um, they, they, they sniff it out, they, they can't trust you, or well, you've got a hard time getting it back. It's like if you tell one lie to a player and they find out, you're going to have a hard time uh, moving forward with that. All right, what's next? Just hodgepodge, other things to consider. Use the assistant coaches as a resource. Try to be non-confrontational as possible. Leave that to the head coach. Guy wants to yell and cuss and act crazy. All right, just go do it. Yeah, I, I'm not. Now, if it's your personality to be confrontational, don't <laughs> change. Be who you are. If that's you, if you're an asshole in the face type of guy, then just then be that way. Because they'll they'll sniff that out too if you're being phony, and all of a sudden you're gonna be the nice guy. Use I I, I think this is good to do. If you have the ability to use the locker room as a daily lesson, I was a teacher for 25 years, so you know, I'm thinking all that lesson plan and all that stuff. Right, Darcy? You have lesson plans? That's my daughter, by the way. She's a teacher, too. Uh, so, you know, lesson plans. What's the schedule? They walk into the locker room. What's, you know, what's the schedule today? You know, is there a quote or a, a bullshit trivia? A guy, Chris used to love the trivia stuff. You know, because he's probably the most competitive guy. He would, I put a trivia thing and he'd tell me, say, hey, Coach, is this the answer? No. Okay. Don't use your phone. Okay. All right, what's next? I, I think it's really important. If you're, if you're old like me, you've had mentors. If you're a younger coach, you got to get them. <coughs> I call them 3 a.m. guys. You got them? If something goes wrong and it's all fucked up and it's 3 o'clock in the morning, who can you call? I can call that guy right there. But these, you know, these are my mentors. But you got them. Or you should if you're young and if you're older, maybe you can be one. But I think that's really important that you have 3 a.m. guys in your life. Because, man, you can do six games in a row and a coach is yelling at you. <coughs> and it's really not your fault that you didn't shoot out anyway. You gotta have some guys. You gotta have some guys to call. <clears throat> All right. Um, this is a you know, book recommendation if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, but I think it's really good to read. Anybody read the first one? It's phenomenal, right? It's a hard read. It's like you gotta really concentrate because this guy's off the charts brilliant. If you've never seen him, I'd recommend you watch him on YouTube. Or he's he's on a tour right now, so uh, he's. Yeah, he's, a, he's a little different. Canadian, dude, of course. The captain class, anybody? Good, huh? The chapter on the All Blacks. Unbelievable. The All Blacks are a New Zealand uh, rugby team. <clears throat> and just the way that they're called, you know, you think, first culture is great, right? We all agree. 
This shit is off the charts culture. The all blacks. I would recommend that. Um, there's a book called More Than Riders. Anybody read it? 50s and 60s, relationship, white player, black player, high school kids, different sides of the track. Very, very segregated town in the South. True story. And how their relationship changes the way that the whole town's related together. It, it's, it's a really good book. The Art of Learning, it's deep. I mean, it, it takes concentration. And there's a book called Anti-Fragile. It's about chaos, the theory of chaos. And, I, and I, I would recommend that. Anyway, what's next? And here's something that I, and the guys that have worked with me have been around me, I think. And, and one of the things I really appreciate about Ryan Adams is he, he kind of lives by this credo, too. Take a job seriously and don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, and if you, if, you, if you can laugh together, you can work together. Our job is, yeah, it's really important. The NBA is an important thing. But I always remember this. It's entertainment. The NBA is entertainment. It's competition. But above all, it's entertainment. And I really feel that you know, if you can laugh together, you can work together. It's, it's serious business, but you can also have fun and laugh together. Because at the end of the day, you know, we all lose our job at some point anyway. <laughs> Nobody gets out unscathed. All right? It's probably going to happen. It happens to everybody in this room probably. Or it will. If it hasn't yet, it's going to at some point. And so, uh, you know, go to the next one. Who has a question? That, that's the last one, right? Okay. Anybody, any questions at all? Any comments? Who Chuck? Anything? Not your phone right yeah. Back to your idea of uh, you know, if they're not going to come to the gym, yeah. then what do you that's do? Sorry, you've been determined. Uh, I think point, it has. Yeah, at what point, you know, the league now is younger and younger and younger. Um, what point do you teach them habits of working hard and the routines and that kind of thing? Day one. Yeah, so. That has to start on day one. The habits and the routine has to start on day one. If they're still reluctant, what do you do? I don't know. I can't. I can't answer that. Um, I, but I think you have to have a plan, and everybody has to approach it different. But it's going to happen. You you are all thinking right now in your head. Yeah, I know a guy. So I know that guy that I have. To. But really, his fate's probably been determined to, to me. Uh, as far as not getting to where he could get. To. I'd love to hear your three things you really believe. Number one is defeat. I'm a big guy. I'm a big believer in that all starts with defeat and footwork. I'm really big into that. The second thing is the elbow with my I'm really a firm believer the elbow's got to get above the eyebrow. The third thing is the hands properly placed on the ball. I mean, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but just, and I'm constantly trying to re go over and test my theory. I'm a firm believer on, on trying to seam everything, okay. okay, with the middle finger across. I, I, I teach the little kids to separate the T, T, guy separated, I turn it right there. That's how I start teaching with the little kids. T, separate, turn here, guy in here, finger spread on, on the pads, all that stuff that we teach. I'm, I, to me, trying to get players to seam the ball as much as you can. Like when you shoot free throw, everybody seems it, right? As much as you can get the pass and get it seen and, and really work on that, I think is important. And then the feet and the elbow. Right? I mean, there's a million things going to shoot, right? There's yeah. probably 50 teaching points, but you can't teach all 50 of them. Yeah, thanks, guys.